Hey there. All right. Today we're working on the four wheeler. It's always something with equipment. Always something wrong. Always something to do. And uh, today we're working on this machine right here. 19, and I say we, me and Millie Dog. Millie, good girl. Millie might be pregnant. Not real happy about that. And she only got pregnant after I built this fence all the way around this place. And her boyfriend found a weak spot in the horse pasture fence. Uh, anyway, that's something we got to deal with. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to reinstall a new intake collar. I got a new intake collar. It goes in that hole there. New, uh, I, got, I redone the carburetor, the breather. I got a brand new battery, a battery tender, and some new gas for it. I also got this uh, this line here. This is a special kind of plastic that's not supposed to have anything that will. Uh, so if you if you ever burn ethanol fuel in your machines. Um, it's going to eat the inside of your rubber hoses up and it's going to deposit huh must be a fire somewhere anyway it deposits makes puts those little deposits from the rubber hose down into your carburetor clogs up jets and everything and if you let us and all gas sit it turns into sugar it looks like i don't know what it is uh, gunky stuff and uh I've put this new, I've never tried this kind of, um, yeah, that's a fire trip. I've never tried this kind of fuel filter before. So this will be a new one, but I like it. It's clear, it's small, fits in this little tunnel right here. That's the gas tank. Uh, I'm sorry, that's not the gas tank. Here's the gas tank. Um, but it fits in this little plastic pan right here pretty good down in this little ditch uh, so that's a good thing so I'm gonna work on that get that going I've changed the oil in it um, that's where the oil filter is underneath where you change the oil and over here's where you check it so I'll be checking the oil before I crank it so this is a 1998 Foreman 450 ES. The ES stands for electric shift. Um, and it's got a bad low tire. Um, that valve stem is sticking. That's where, the, that's where the air is coming from. So I'll get my air pump over here, and plug it up, and uh, put some air in that tire. I'm going to work on it right here. So not a big deal. I'm going to crank it right here. So we're going to see if we can crank it today so that's what uh, that's what's gonna go on um, and I'm gonna be running hunter low lead in it from now on I'm not gonna run ethanol free gas I'm not gonna run regular ethanol 10% ethanol gas I'm running aviation fuel uh, you can get them get it at an airport uh, about 498 a gallon it's really expensive but um, I mean, when it comes down to maintenance on these things and keeping the carburetors from gumming up, it's uh, it's well worth it. So, uh, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and get all my tools. Or I don't need many tools. A couple of screwdrivers. Um, a couple of screwdrivers and a socket, probably a 10 millimeter or 8 millimeter socket. I took I took these head bolts off these intake bolts off with uh, I don't know if the camera's pointing at it with a uh, impact when I backed them out but I won't be putting them back on with an impact of course so and I got a brand new one of those the other one was cracked so uh, that's what we're going to work on I'm guessing I'll put the camera facing 
down this way since the sun is uh, killing but then I got shadow so um, I don't know how to do this maybe I'll put it right here um, yeah so okay um, so that's what we're gonna be doing today and we'll see if we can get her going Okay, so once again, I lost all my recording, uh, audio recording. Not sure what's going on. Anyway, so right here I'm showing you all the collar, the intake collar that I bought, 36 bucks, that little part that connects the uh, carburetor to the, uh, to the head of the machine. So this video is going to be a little bit shorter than than what I wanted, but uh, and no more sound on it. All my clips lost all the sound, so I'll be going and buying a audio recording device either today or tomorrow. So we won't have this problem again. So um, sorry about that. Just trying to figure all this out. So uh, but anyway, that's the uh, the part that goes to carburetor to the head of the bike comes with the clamp and uh, I'll be putting it on here in a minute so here's a carburetor all cleaned up um, put new parts in it that's what I'm talking about there. That big wire that's hanging off the bottom of it there is a uh, is a heater wire that came on these bikes. Um, I didn't even plug it back in whenever I hooked it back up. Now that I think about it, I got to do that. Uh, it's not needed. A lot of people actually cut them off with wire cutters. Um, that hose at the top is a vent hose. Um, so yeah, so that's the next thing I'll do is actually fit the collar to the carburetor which was a mistake um, I should have put that on the head first I kind of wanted to put it on there to show you guys how it works um, and when I did that it made it to where I couldn't get it off without fear of breaking it so uh, I'll show you that in just a second alright so here it is um, I put the intake collar on the carburetor And for fear of breaking it, I couldn't get it back off. So I did that to fit it on, make sure it fit, and to show y'all how it works, how it goes on there. But uh, I was afraid I was going to break it when I pulled it off. So I left it on there, and I didn't put the, the clamp there on there, that ring clamp. I didn't put it on there. So now I had to pretty much just take it apart and slide it around that collar but uh, I kind of pulled on it a little bit just to see how tight it was and it's really really tight it's, it, it, that is plastic a plastic collar wrapped in rubber hard rubber and seemed like it would break pretty easy like the last one did well, of course the last one was made in 1998 and uh, I broke it about four weeks ago three or four weeks ago um, actually, I don't know if I broke it or not. I just found a crack in it. So I'm assuming it was broke more of the times when I removed the carburetor. The bike's been running lean for some time. And uh, I think that's what, what was going on with it. So I left the collar on there. And I'm having to switch from a nice socket wrench uh, with a ratchet to a open-end number eight box wrench, eight millimeter box wrench to do all this work with uh, because I can no longer get the socket wrench in there because the carburetor is in the way now. Okay, so putting all the parts on the carburetor um, tightening the band up there. All it is is just a uh, just a band with a 
with a uh, screw, nothing special. And I just had to slip it around the collar and it went on pretty well. Um, you kind of want to be careful when you're tightening all this stuff because it's rubber and cast and aluminum and, and uh, you know, things break really easy when you get into working with that kind of stuff. So I'll install the carburetor and um, we'll see how that goes. All right, the carburetor is installed. This little cable that I have in my hand is for the choke. And that's my daughter singing in the background. Yeah. So there's a little cable. You can see the little uh, jet on the end of, or the little tip on the end of it. As I'm pulling it in and out of the cable, that actually chokes the carburetor. And uh, it's a pretty easy install. Just put it in a hole and uh, twist it in on the top of the carburetor. So here I go. Just a little twist in there. And um, I'll just get a little wrench and tighten that up. You don't need to be tight. It's a little plastic nut. That's all it is. So it's just a little, just a little snug. So there's the fuel line, and uh, I figure out here in just a few minutes that it does need to be installed first. There's a vent hose that goes down in that little piece of plastic. So we'll reinstall that real quick. That was easy. Here's the air box. We'll install that next after I get the gas line on. Alright, got the air box on. There's a breather tube that goes underneath the gas tank or beside the gas tank. It's kind of raised up, so in case you get any water, there's some clamps in there. Got everything hooked up. Um, gas line, I did install the gas line, didn't get that on video. Um, just making sure everything's hooked up before I put the battery in and uh, hook all that up. So uh, battery will be next. All right, here's a battery, Moto Bat. It's supposed to be the uh, best battery on the market. Um, I bought the charger that goes with it. It's a Moto Bat brand charger. I'm sure it's pretty much just like any other trickle charger. I'm not branding the Moto Bat brand, but that's what my uh, guy that owns an ATV shop recommended to me. He said he's had real good luck with them. So that's what we're going to put on there. Um, this bike don't need a trickle charger, but we don't, we're don't. we not going to be riding it a whole bunch. So uh, I think I'll keep, a, keep this trickle charger on it. It's got quick connects on there that I'll install with the battery. That way I don't have to keep putting alligator clips on it because there's going to be a strap across the battery and that blocks the uh, post. So I will permanently install a wire lead that goes from the battery and it has a little protector cap on it and I can hook the charger directly into it uh, by either removing the seat or I can run that wire through a hole in the fairing or not fairing in the fenders. So that's what I'll be doing, doing now. All right, got the battery installed. Um, wasn't much to it. It was literally about a five to six minute job. The uh, the guy that sold me the battery actually had the um, the little post and everything already on there. It doesn't come that way. 
but uh, he already had them on there for me. It's got a little battery tray it's sitting in. Uh, there's the wire that I was telling you about that will be connected permanently on. So it's connected, and all I have to do is take that cap off and connect it directly to the charger, um, either through a hole in the, the plastic there under the seat if I want to, or I'm not sure I want to do that. So I think I'm just going to keep it curled up in there. So, And this is why you can't use alligator clips because that metal strap goes over the battery and covers the post up so um, that little wire I can run it out holes if I want to whatever that's kind of what I'm explaining here so you get the point and uh, but I'm just going to curl it up in there and leave it stored for now it's just really easy to pop the seat off and just hook it up so that's what I'm going to do All right, this is my new gas can I bought. I was just wanted to show you the new gas can. I have a diesel can just like this, and I love it. That is an anti-spill um, adapter on the top of it there. The, the can doesn't have a hole or a vent or anything anywhere in it, so uh, you're not going to spill anything on you. The actual cap is vented. Um, I really like it. So uh, you just pop that little cap off the end of the nozzle. And it's got that little hook right there where my finger was that hooks on the edge of whatever you're dumping your fuel in. But as you can see, that kind of slips sometimes when the can's really heavy like this one is. Or if you got it on plastic like I do. Just like that. So Anyway, so you just push that button down with three fingers and uh, it'll just dump in no splashing no getting fuel all over the place and you'll see the little deal slip here again in just a second so like I said it's not perfect but uh, um, it's probably the best one I've found so far without getting drenched getting fuel all over the place uh, really easy to cut off just let your hand off thumb off the button and it'll it'll immediately shut off so uh, highly recommend them i think that can was almost 30 dollars they're not cheap but i've had my diesel can for about seven months now and i've run probably eight five gallon cans of diesel through it and it hasn't it hasn't failed me yet so um i uh, i like it and i recommend them Okay, well, it's fueled up, and I'm about to try it and see uh, what it takes. I actually pulled the choke on it. I really didn't need to. So uh, it's trying to fire right now. Uh, you remember, there's no gas in the carburetor. It's filling up. I opened the fuel valve, let it fill for a couple of seconds. Um, it is trying to fire. And you'll see in just a second when I quit choking it like a dummy. There it goes. Now it's running. And it's idling on its own. It hasn't, this thing hasn't been cranked in uh, a year probably. And run, and it's just sitting there idling really nice. And it hasn't been cranked in so long with, with a cold engine. So, um, sounds really good. I can't make four wheeler noises. <laughs> Something like that. So <laughs> it smells like an airplane because I got 100 low lead in it. I couldn't re realize why it smelled like that until my brain started working again, and I remembered I put 100 low lead in the gas tank. So, uh, so yeah, it smells like a Cessna 172. Um, that's what it smells like. It's pretty cool. So, all right. Well, it's running. It's working. And uh, I'm happy. I hope maybe you learned something. Hope I could help anybody. If anybody got any questions on anything, I'm pretty good with this stuff. Everything was torqued to Honda specifications. Wink, wink. Uh, I think it's 
torque to farm specifications is what I call it. They're, uh, they're called uh, farm torque is what I call it. So I farm torqued it. And, uh, but it's all good. So uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. We will see you on the next one. I got a little surprise later.